Hello everyone, what's up guys, buckle up, because the pattern we're heading into is shaping up to be one of the most chaotic, high octane setups I've seen all season. I've been tracking this evolution for nearly a week, and every new model run keeps cranking the intensity even higher. We're looking at back-to-back -back arctic blasts lining up like dominoes, fractured polar vortex unraveling overhead, and an atmospheric river roaring into the west like a fire-breathing beast. There is so much frigid air and deep moisture flooding the country simultaneously that the models practically look like they're trying to launch a full-scale snow manufacturing operation. And today, we're finally catching the first major signals for the Ohio Valley, the Mid Atlantic, and the Northeast. I'm not talking about some weak little flurry event. I'm talking about the strongest early season snow signal we've seen yet. Still a bit distant on the timeline, but trust me, what these models are hinting at is worth every second of your attention. You're going to want to stay locked in all the way through. But before we unleash the long-range insanity, let's break down what's happening right now. Because the current setup is already laying the foundation for everything that's coming next. To kick things off, we've got a storm system slamming into the Pacific Northwest. Light to moderate rain is sliding into Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. Head inland and the Rockies are firing off scattered showers and thunderstorms and at high elevations. It's all snow. Classic early season western setup. But the area that, really, grabbed my attention earlier today is north central Texas. We've got pockets of pop-up thunderstorms. Just west of the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex, absolutely hammering that zone. The Storm Prediction Center even issued a messy, low-confidence discussion not enough for a watch, but definitely enough activity to raise some eyebrows. And by the way, if you'd like a detailed forecast tailored to your city or region, drop it in the comments. I'll respond individually as time allows. Also, if you enjoy the video and subscribe, I would sincerely appreciate it. Moving North Minnesota, Northern Wisconsin, and Michigan's Upper Peninsula. You're stuck under a sloppy, miserable mix of wintry precipitation. Snow, sleet, slush, Pick your flavor. And I know it's not the most densely populated region, but if you're watching from up there, jump into the comments and tell me what you're seeing out your window dot now. While the east looks dry right this moment, that's going to change in a massive way. Because this next graphic explains everything. About the powerhouse pattern fueling. The next two weeks, you can literally see the atmospheric river slicing across the Pacific and blasting a plume of moisture into the southwest and south-central U.S. this. It's a full-on fire hose of Pacific water vapor. Up north, the jet stream is channeling its own surge of energy straight into the northwest. When these two streams merge in, believe me, they're merging, we get the perfect breeding ground for enormous storm systems. And once that Arctic air dives deeper into the U.S., boom, snow chances erupt across the northern Rockies, the northern plains, the Great Lakes. Okay, now for the first time men to the Ohio Valley, meet Atlantic, and the Northeast. We'll break all of that down in a moment. But first, let's zoom out and take a look at the last 20 days. From Halloween through every day of November so far, the West and Central U.S. have been running warmer than average. The Great Lakes have had cooler pockets. Florida has been well below normal. The meet Atlantic has been hovering near seasonal. Basically, we've been stuck in a warm West. My LDs split for a while now. That split is about to sharpen dramatically. Now let's talk model starting. With the European and the GFS, the Euro is showing storm after storm rolling through the southwest and south central states courtesy of that atmospheric river. Thunderstorms fire up across Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and continue pushing eastward as we move into tomorrow. Snow begins filling in across the Sierra Nevada and the Rockies. But here's what you need to watch closely, as we inch closer to Thanksgiving. Colder air starts filtering into the eastern half of the country. The western U.S. warms up. And that warmer west colderest flip is exactly what we call a positive PNA. And that kind of pattern doesn't just allow cold, it's arctic air to push south heat funnels. It fast and aggressively, straight into the heart of the United States. Yes. The polar vortex split is already sending cold air regardless. But the PNA blocking supercharges the process and forces that bitter air eastward instead of letting it 
drift west. On the European model, we're already seeing early snow showers popping across the Great Lakes and the Northeast, plus lake effect bands firing up as that cold air pours in. The Euro isn't showing a blockbuster East Coast snowstorm yet, but the GFS has zero hesitation going big. And that's where things get very interesting. Switch over to the GFS run, cause this is where everything starts aligning. Snowstorm number one hits shortly after Thanksgiving. Pacific moisture surges in from the atmospheric river. Gulf moisture gets pulled north. Energy barrels down from the northern jet. Suddenly you've got a fully loaded system laying down snow across portions of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and potentially the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. This isn't even extreme long range. We're talking around day 10 close enough to be plausible, but still far enough out that you'll see some model wobbling. Still, the signature is loud and clear, and as soon as that system exits, another major storm spins up heading into early December. The Midwest, the Upper Great Lakes, and possibly the interior Northeast all lined up for back-to-back -back snow events. The GFS even tosses a clipper system behind that. So, for the north-central U.S., we're talking rapid-fire winter systems, each followed by fresh injections of Arctic air. What we're heading into is the kind of setup where every new cold surge reloads the atmosphere. And when that happens, your snow chances don't depend on one perfectly timed storm you. Get multiple windows, multiple opportunities, and each one becomes more favorable as we push deeper into December. But before we drift too far ahead, let me quickly show you what's unfolding right now. The near term is honestly pretty tame compared to what's coming. The jet stream is arching north a classic signal of a short-term warm-up. And we've got a developing storm forming out west. It'll bring rain, some mountain snow for the Rockies, maybe pockets of severe weather in the southern plains. But overall, it's still a mild system. If you're in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut Tony Ware that saw snow yesterday, drop a comment and tell me what you experienced. I slept straight through the whole event, so I'm depending on you for ground truth. Even if it was just white rain, those reports matter now. Let's get to the big stuff. This is what all of you clicked for. When does the flip happen? How cold does it get? Who gets snow and when? And why does this pattern support multiple waves? For that, I'm going straight to the 500 MB height anomaly maps. These maps are the cheat codes of long-range forecasting. They reveal the pattern. For the storms even form, pull up the Euro. The Euro AI, the ensemble guidance, they all show the same backbone. A ridge flexing over the east in the short term. Then a sharp trough crashing into the US next week. Followed by a much stronger Arctic connection building as we enter early. December, the Thanksgiving window, the first cold shot is more of a traditional polar front. Chilly, yes, but not the deep Arctic stuff yet and the models don't merge the southern energy with the northern jet in time. So the Thanksgiving storm looks mainly like rain for most people, with a solid blizzard for parts of Canada and lake effect snow behind it. But that storm drags in the cold, resets the pattern, and opens the door. Then we get the second shot, the one with Arctic fingerprints, all over it. This surge is tied directly to the polar vortex weakening aloft. And when that happens, Cold air stops being trapped in the far north, it starts leaking southward. You'll see those broad blue anomalies stretching from northern Canada, straight into the US, and the ensembles are showing exactly that as we approach the first week of December. Now, is the southeast ridge trying to be annoying? Yes. Absolutely, it wants to hang on, and the MJ Otha Medungulian oscillations part of the reason. It's in a warm phase right now, and until it rotates into phases 1 and 2, it's going to push back against the cold. But once we get past that first week of December, the MJO flips into colder phases, the NAO potentially trends negative, and the true winter pattern locks in. So here's the bottom line. Thanksgiving into Black Friday. First cold shot, big storm equals mostly rain for many lake effect snow behind it. Pattern resets surly December. The first real snow opportunities for the plains and Midwest. Colder pattern strengthens Arctic energy becomes dominant. Multiple waves of snow become possible across the central and eastern. U.S.Allrit. You want to forecast specific to your city or region? Drop it in the comments. I'll respond individually as I have time. 
Commenting is completely free. Thank you guys, see you next video.